Atla leads astray many and guides many to the right way by the same thing. And he leads astray only those who disobey Allah. Fighting has been enjoined upon you while it is hateful to you. But perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you, and perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows, while you know not, your wives are a place of sowing of seed for you, so come to your place of cultivation however you wish and put forth, righteousness, for yourselves. And fear Allah and know that you will meet him. And give good tidings to the believers. And they, the unbelievers, planned to deceive, and Allah planned to deceive, the unbelievers, and Allah is the best of deceivers. If you fear that you may not deal justly with the orphans, then marry, other, women that you like, two, three, or four. But if you fear that you may not treat them fairly, then, marry only, one, or, marry from among, your slave women. That makes it likelier that you will not be unfair. Allah instructs you concerning your children, for the male, what is equal to the share of two females. But if there are, only, daughters, two or more, for them is two-thirds of one's estate. And if there is only one, for her is half. And for one's parents, to each one of them is a sixth of his estate if he left children. But if he had no children and the parents, alone, inherit from him, then for his mother is one third. And if he had brothers, or sisters, for his mother is a sixth, after any bequest he, may have, made or debt. Your parents or your children, you know not which of them are nearest to you in benefit. These shares are, an obligation, imposed, by Allah. Indeed, Allah is ever knowing and wise. And also forbidden to you are all married women, Masanat, except those women whom your right hands have come to possess, as a result of war aka slave women. This is Allah's decree and it is binding upon you. But it is lawful for you to seek out all women except these, offering them your wealth and the protection of wedlock rather than using them for the unfettered satisfaction of lust and in exchange of what you enjoy by marrying them pay their bridal due as an obligation. But there is no blame on you if you mutually agree to alter the settlement after it has been made. Surely Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Men are in charge of women by, right of, what Allah has given one over the other and what they spend, for maintenance, from their wealth. So righteous women are devoutly obedient, guarding in, the husband's, absence what Allah would have them guard. But those, wives, from whom you fear arrogance, first, advise them, then if they persist, forsake them in bed, and, finally, strike them. But if they obey you, once more, seek no means against them. Indeed, Allah is ever exalted and grand. They wish you to become unbelievers as they themselves are. Do not establish friendship with them until they have abandoned their homes for the cause of God. If they betray you, Seize them and slay them wherever you find them. Do not establish friendship with them or seek their help. Because of their saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus son of Mary, Allah's messenger, they slew him not nor crucified him, but it appeared so unto them, and lo! Those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof, they have no knowledge thereof save pursuit of a conjecture, they slew him not for certain. Those who wage war against Allah and his messenger, and go about the earth spreading mischief indeed their recompense is that they either be done to death, or be crucified, or have their hands and feet cut off from the opposite sides or be banished from the land. Such shall be their degradation in this world, and a mighty chastisement lies in store for them in the world to come. And cut off the hands of those men or women who are thieves, a recompense of their deeds, a punishment from Allah, and Allah is almighty, wise. Believers. Do not take the Jews and the Christians for your allies. They are the allies of each other. And among you he who takes them for allies, shall be regarded as one of them. Allah does not guide the wrongdoers. And recall when your Lord inspired the angels, I am certainly with you. So make firm the feet of those who believe. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. So strike at their necks and strike at every pore and tip fight against them until the mischief ends and the way prescribed by Allah, the whole of it prevail then, if they give up mischief, surely Allah sees what they do. Verily the worst of creatures in the sight of God are those who deny, the truth, and will not believe, it is not for a prophet to have captives, of war, until he inflicts a massacre, upon Allah's enemies, in the land.
Some Muslims desire the commodities of this world, but Allah desires, for you, the hereafter. And Allah is exalted in might and wise. But when the sacred months expire slay those who associate others with Allah and His divinity wherever you find them, seize them, and besiege them, and lie in wait for them. But if they repent and establish the prayer and pay zakah, leave them alone. Surely Allah is all forgiving, ever merciful. Do you think that God will not make any distinction between those of you who have fought for His cause and have relied on no one other than God, His Messenger, and the faithful ones, and other people? God is well aware of what you do. Fight those people of the book who do not believe in God in the last day, who do not prohibit what God and His Apostle have forbidden, nor accept divine law, until all of them pay protective tax and submission. Prophet. Strive against the unbelievers and the hypocrites, and be severe to them. Hell shall be their abode, what an evil destination, believers. Fight against the unbelievers who live around you, and let them find a new sternness. Know that Allah is with the god very. God has made some of you richer than others. The rich ones do not have to give away their property to their slaves to make them equally rich. Do they reject the bounties of God? Allah sets forth the parable, of two men, one, a slave under the dominion of another, he has no power of any sort, and, the other, a man on whom we have bestowed goodly favors from ourselves, and he spends thereof, freely, privately and publicly, are the two equal? By no means, praise be to Allah. But most of them understand not. Prophet, we have made lawful for you your wives whose bridal dues you have paid, and the slave girls you possess from among the prisoners of war, and the daughters of your paternal uncles and paternal aunts, and the daughters of your maternal uncles and maternal aunts who have migrated with you, and a believing woman who gives herself to the Prophet and whom he wants to take in marriage. O Prophet, this privilege is yours alone to the exclusion of other believers. We know well what restrictions we have imposed upon them as regards their wives and those whom their right hands possess, and have exempted you from those restrictions, that there may be no constraint upon you. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. It is not lawful for you, to marry other, women after this, nor to change them for other wives even though their beauty attracts you, except those, captives or slaves whom your right hand possesses. And Allah is ever a watcher over all things. Allah does not direct such wrongdoers to the right way. And who have lost all expectation of menstruation shall be three months in case you entertain any doubt, and the same shall apply to those who have not yet menstruated. As for pregnant women, their waiting period shall be until the delivery of their burden. Allah will create ease for him who fears Allah. Indeed. They who disbelieved among the people of the scripture and the polytheists will be in the fire of hell, abiding eternally therein. Those are the worst of creatures.